Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's seven days to go until the Great North Run. Um, are you nervous yet? This video is following on from the video I did last time, so it was eight weeks out until the Great North Run. If you haven't seen it, check out the link in the description below. I'll link it for you. So this video is just a quick run through of what you should really expect. Also a bit of a heads up as well, just so you know what to expect on the day. Um, what it should be like in terms of atmosphere, crowds, setting up things, just to give you some ideas. It's not a do or do not video, it's, it's your own Great North Front, so you should experience it in your own way. The night before, you should have everything ready, kit, socks, shoes, shorts, vest, top, everything. If it's going to be a, a crap or wet day to start off with, it might be worth buying a cheap rain jacket or rain poncho, I think that's what they're called, for like a quid. Just to keep it on you. I mean, you can discard it when the race starts. Um, I think they keep some of the clothing, so if you use clothing, it's going to go to a good cause. For an idea, I used to put my socks inside my shoes because I would always know where my shoes are. Therefore, if my socks are there, I've got no stress of worrying of matching up socks or anything like that. So, so that's a little tip for you. The week leading up to the Great North Run, it should have been easy. The run should have been about 10, 20 minutes at that. Nothing strenuous, nothing daft, just, just to keep you ticking over. By now, if you've got new shoes, you should have brought them in by now. Um, if you wear new shoes, you're taking a big chance for blisters, but hey-ho. On the day, right, so my advice would be to try and get there as early and realistically as possible. So if you're coming from Shields, so if you're staying in South Shields, um, leave maybe two, two and a half hours before the start, three hours at a push. If you're coming from the northeast, like Newcastle, um, yeah, about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Give yourself plenty of time to get the start line, get warmed up, find your pen, you know, gather your surroundings, go to the toilet quickly. Um, I know there's always pre-race pee. Uh, <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. The best thing to do is just try not to panic. So if something goes wrong, there's something about to go wrong in the day, like you forgot to have a banana, you forgot to have something in your cereal, or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Stuff like this happens, uh, just don't panic because you're, you're losing waste energy from panic and believe me. In terms of your family, you should all know where you're meeting at the end of the race, whether it's at the pub, at the letters, at the meet point uh, they've got there, um, just just so you're not stressing and, and scrambling to look for your parents. I mean, if you're carrying your phone, that's great. If not, just make sure you know everyone is gonna be at the end of the race. So on the day, this is when it really kicks in. So you're on the Metro, um, which is probably the best way to get to the Great North Run in my eyes, because it's the one route in terms of public transport that's not gonna get stopped all the time, like buses and routes. The metro is just a straight line from South Shields and it's bound to go through all the different stations, even coming from Sunderland as well, to get to Newcastle. The only downside to this is it does get crowded, but that's expected. It's one of those things, it's a big event, you, you know, the metros are shipping 30, 40, 50,000 people over a space of four hours, five hours, so it is gonna get crowded. So if you're not a fan of crowds, you're just gonna have to just, you know, bear with it and just, you know, embrace it is the, is the word I'm looking for. Embrace it because it's a, an unbelievable atmosphere that you'll experience, honestly. And also, if you're not like a big fan of crowds, just open the doors every time it stops because it stops at every station. Uh, it doesn't just fly through, it will stop at every station to pick people up. Get a wristband as well while I'm on it. I'll put a link in the description below for you um, if you can still get them then. But yeah, get a wristband, a metro wristband, just it saves you from going to the ticket machine and putting money in and missing the metro. So you can just get a wristband and off you pop. Okay, so you're in your pen. Um, you know, get there early, try and get a warm up in there as well. Nerves will be like kicking in. Um, I mean, the walk from Haymarket to the start line was when it really kicked in for me because I've seen a lot of crowds. Uh, I've seen a lot of TV guys, the BBC are normally there. So like Colin Jackson's in and around, I think who dart in between like charity groups and individuals. Just embrace it, don't panic, embrace it. You've trained for this, you've put the work in for it, so it's something you should be excited for. So don't panic, don't stress, just you know, get your pen in your own time, ideally before the cutoff point, as I found out when I got there after the cutoff point, I was locked outside my own pen, and therefore I had to jump over the fence. Not ideal, um, but I learned the hard way, in other words. So just try and get your pen as, as quick as you can. When you're inside your pen, try and get some drills done. If you're early enough, there should be a nice big gap. If not, try and get some drills and some warm-ups inside the pen or outside the pen, um, and you should be okay. As long as you're nice and warm and loose, or you just use the first man as your warm-up. So the gun's gone off. Don't expect to go off straight away. 
There's allocated time slots of when your pen gets, gets through and gets um, squeezed at the front. So the elite athletes will go off first and then the pens following after that. Um, my advice would be just as the walk towards the start line kicks in, this is when you should like just start to switch on a little bit. Um, you need to stay focused. Um, jig yourself up. I used to scream at myself and slap my legs to get myself going. So I would scream like, I don't know, I can't remember what I screamed last time I did it. So you've crossed the line, you've started your watch. This is it. This is what you've been training for for 12, 13, 14 weeks. My advice, do not speed off. It is so easy to just dart it for the first mile because you get caught in the emotion and the excitement of it all. Don't dart off, take it nice and easy. Treat the first mile as a bit of a warm up. So nothing too slow, but nothing ridiculously fast at the same time, just so you get a feel for the course. There's crowds everywhere for the first mile. And if you go underground, you hear the Oggies. So I used to go under the bypass um, and it was fantastic. Just embrace all the crowds. They're all cheering for you. Even if you've got your name across your chest, it's a bit of a bonus at the same time because they'll shout for you. The first couple of miles are quite easy. The iconic mile, I think it's between one and a half and two is over the time bridge. Um, and when you get to see the red arrows and it's quality. Um, you see it on TV all the time, but experiencing it is something else. You see your first band, you head towards mile three at Gateshead Stadium, first water station. So if you've planned your water station route, um, great, follow the plan, don't change anything. Bit of a challenge towards Hewith um, and the Black Bull. The Black Bull Hill um, is the highest climb of the entire Great North Run. So if you've done the hill work and the strength work, this is going to be perfect. The next couple of miles are quite simple. The crowds are still there, but not as many. Then you get the 10K mark, um, which is another drink station. There's a LucasAid station before, I think at about mile four, mile five. If you've done LucasAid training through your training, take it on. If not, don't do it. Um, just stick to your plan. Don't change anything on the day is my advice. Don't change anything. I'm flying through this Great North Run. It's not as quick as this. <laughs> so you're heading towards the John Reed Road. That stretch from 10K onwards is amazing because people have like jellies and fruit and sometimes water. And um, if you feel you need to take additional water on, great. If you feel you need a bit of a kick, there are some jellies there. Um, I took some jellies on. They didn't do anything for me. Um, they give us a bit of a sugar rush, but I would possibly try not to take the jellies because if you have a sugar rush, what goes up must come down in my eyes. So I learned the hard way. So. If you want to, just you know, to be nice to the kids and everyone, do so. If not, I would just, just, just try and run on and enjoy it. Okay, the John Reed Road. Everyone says this is the hardest part of the Great North Run, and it is because it's just so long. So you come off the roundabout. You've got Tesco's. You're looking at Tesco's. You come round the roundabout and you come towards the John Reed Road. The first bit is a climb, and it is a bit of a long climb. There's a shower there, where, like a cool shower, so if you're feeling hot, uh, just run through it to cool yourself down. There's a water station coming up as well, I believe. So it comes off the first roundabout after you turn onto the John Reed Road. There's people there with Vaseline, so if you've vased, oh yeah, Vaseline. Vaz up your, your nipples and your sensitive areas because God forbid um, that you bleed or you get a bit chafage and there's nothing worse than chafage. So if you've got Vaseline, do it up. So as I said, there's Vaseline there with from St. John's. And if you need it, just take some, take on water. Um, and then you've got the next bit of the John Reed Road, which is another climb. And the best thing is, what I've learned is what goes up must come down again. So in terms of a hill, you go up and there's a nice little decline for you to recover on. And it flattens out a little bit and then climbs again for the third part of the John Reed Road. Crowds are still late. There's like a, a boost section, like an energy section, which is so tempting to just listen to the the motivational music and the crowd and shoot off again. Don't do it, <laughs> just keep going your pace. And the music's great, it does put some tingles down the back, of your, like down your spine and you know, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and everything, great. But just don't fire off because it's so easy to do so. You're calling it towards the end of the John Reed Road, you're about to enter the nuke. This is around mile 10 and yeah, your body's starting to hurt. This is where it's the true test of the Great North Run, I think they say and you've just got to take it nice and easy. There's crowds still there, and then you come towards the end of the nuke, and then you're heading towards Mars and Inn. This is where it gets to crunch time, and there's a horrible, horrible climb. I mean, it's horrible, especially if your legs are knackered, um, if you're feeling the burn, you've just got to take the hill nice and easy. If you want to walk, 
just walk it, it's fine. Um, and then you come off the bank, there's a bit of flat, you see the Marsden Inn, and there's this massive drop for the Marsden Inn bank. My advice for this is don't lean forward. <laughs> just sit back, let your legs turn over, your pace, don't slam your legs down because it'll hurt your knees. Just let your legs go naturally um, and sit back a little bit, don't lean forward because if you lean forward going on a hill, uh, gravity is going to be a bitch and pull you down and then it could be falling flat on your face. So you turn off from the, the big hill and this is it. This is the last mile and it's the most excruciating mile ever because no matter how close you think you're getting, this last mile just seems to be getting further and further and further away. But I forgot to mention there is a drink station before the Marsden Inn, so get your last chance to get some water inside you. Um, I think there's a Lucas Aid station at the sound energy bit. Um, I think that's normally run by South Shields Harriers, so if you do go there, give them a shout. I think that they're this year, I'm not entirely sure, but if there are, give the South Shields Harriers a shout. So yeah, back to it, the last mile. It is crowded, this is where it gets really crowded, um, and you know, my advice would be patience. Throughout the race as well, patience, because people will be stopping, people will be walking, so if you're after a quick lightning time, you know, people will be stopping, so you might have to manoeuvre, but I would just roll with it because I learned that if you maneuver and go in and out, you waste energy quicker than you do running the Great North Run. And you probably run more than 13 miles. So just be patient. People will be tired. This is where people will slow down and hold your ground. If you see a gap, take it. The worst thing is, and Luke Adams told me this when we had this meeting in 2014 about the first Great North Run, is the signs there. 800 meters to go, 400 meters to go. These are the worst signs ever because no matter how many times that you see these signs, it's definitely not 800 meters away. It's definitely not 400 meters away. It feels about six miles away, but just try and ignore them or try and take on the chin and just keep on going. Keep your legs turning over. You're just so, so close. And then you get in the crowd to come to the home straight this is it. If you've got anything, leave it on the ground, leave it on the floor, leave everything you can on the deck. Put your foot down if you can, finish lines there and dip. Press the button on your watch, you've done it. That's it, you've done the Great North Run. Put your arms in the air, enjoy it. Hit the floor if you feel you need to hit the floor. Um, but yeah, you've done it, this is it. That's the Great North Run done. And I can almost guarantee you that once you've done it, that will not be your last time. And after that, all it is left to do is to try and cool down or recover and head to your charity tent, which is a great meeting point afterwards, by the way. And that's it. That's the run through for the Great North Run. Just want to say good luck to everyone who's doing it. You're doing an amazing thing. Um, charities are going to benefit from a massively just take your time and be careful. If it's hot, wear a cap, uh, keep hydrated. If it's cold, try and stay wrapped up before the race and then just let the natural body heat take over. Do your own thing, do your own race. And that's it, that's the video done for you. I hope it's been helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if you're doing the Great North Run and if it's helped. Um, if you've done it before, what's your time? What are you gonna aim for? Uh, yeah, anything, anything to do with the Great North Run, put in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, just hit the like button just below this video. I'd really appreciate it if you did. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Again, good luck um, and enjoy it. And I'll be seeing you very, very soon. Good luck, guys.